Hi there, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me. So today we're going to have another of these cl classic Matchbox reviews but this time it's something completely different because it's one of the big 30 second scale kits that they brought out 1976 onwards. Um, now I've had a lot of positive feedback I've got to say, almost, almost universally positive. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling to think of any negative comments but I, I can't think of one. People enjoy watching these Matchbox reviews, uh, as they do with the old Airfix and Frog and all that stuff, because it takes them back, obviously, to their childhood. And um, there's a lot of people like me of a certain age that uh, were brought up making these. And generally speaking, these um, have a sort of raison d'etre of the Matchbox product of being very easy to build. Not the most detailed, not the most intricate, not the most high quality in terms of the concept. But they go together really nicely and they also have this coloured plastic which some people hate of course but when you're a certain you know young age if you're 10 or thereabouts it makes it ideal if you don't have airbrushes and all that stuff that comes later you know when you're a bit more older and mature and you want to make a more true scale model but this you know they build up to a kit that looks something like what it shows on the box you know with good decals that worked and decals are excellent and they usually had decent clear parts and everything so they're very good now um, there's been one or two comments that have um, that I said there was no negative comments. The only negative comment is, where's the big ones? Why aren't you the big ones? Well, I've got two of them. I've got this one, and I've got the Messerschmitt BF109E from the Battle of Britain. Uh, and to be quite honest, I just I just overlooked them. I've, I've got them covered in a, like a sheet to keep dust off, and I just forgot they were there. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I saw something else, or somebody mentioned something online, I forget now, but it just jogged my memory, and I went looking for them, and there they were. So, here we go. Now... Just a word of warning before I open this up, and we do, uh, we've got another video to come as well with the Messerschmitt 109. Because of the limitations, this is a 1976 kit, and because of its limitations in terms of uh, you know, the cost to manufacture then, the technology that was available in terms of the moulding quality, etc. It's not like a modern 30 second scale kit where you've got all sorts of you know interactive multimedia parts with resin and photo etch and um, movable parts, removable panels, magnets and all this kind of thing that's just not going to be in here. What you're going to have here really is an upscale 70 second scale kit. But we shouldn't be too harsh on that, you know, that is the way things were and frankly compared to what was coming out at the time, the competition was not as good as this. I'm just thinking of a good example of course which would be um, the Airfix range, obviously they had this 24 scale which were bigger, big. But they were not great, you know. Um, their Spitfire in particular was just really bad, actually. It was not very well shaped. Nothing went together properly. The panels didn't fit. Uh, it was really gappy and you had to do incredible amounts of work. And when you're only that young, young just didn't want to do that. And yeah, it looked like a Spitfire, okay. But it, it wasn't a great experience to build it. It was tough going. It went all bad, actually. Um, people do say that the Stuka the JU87 Stuka dive bomber and the Hawker Hurricane were both really fairly decent, fairly decent, but again, not by modern standards, so it's all relative. But these Matchbox ones, they all went together nicely. Now there was this one, there was the uh, Messerschmitt 109, Emil mentioned. Also there was the Lysander, the spy drop plane, which I haven't got, I'd quite like that actually. I might try and get my hands on one, if I'm not, not going to be cheap. And they also did the Venom and the Tiger Moth. Uh, and then they did other stuff in that range, the Puma helicopter and also the uh, Dornier 114 uh, and the Vickers Bal Victor, I think, but that was not the same scale. So let's, let's get back to this. This is what you're here for. So, starting off, so this is PK501. We've got on the side, I'll bring you in so you can see this properly, we've got some nice artwork. A slightly cartoony caricature style which I'm not that sure about really but this is the way they went for these and then they applied this to some of the other ranges so this is obviously the late very late Spitfire so it's got the sliding bubble canopy like a Mustang detailed engine which is great that's good um, how detailed we'll, we'll see later and you've got three markings you've got the RAF H squadron at Kai Tak in Hong Kong August 1950 the Royal Egyptian Air Force where we sold some spits onto them and then the Royal Auxiliary Air Force City of Edinburgh Squadron in 1950. So this is basically post-war Spitfires. Okay. On the front, as you can see, we've got this very nice um, artwork, and then we've got this sort of a di diagrammatical impression of the cockpit. 
and it says, you know, supremely detailed cockpit, supercharged Griffin engine, detachable canopy, uh, sliding cockpit canopy, detachable engine parts, three sets of decals. And on the other side, usual blah, 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 and then there's this picture of what it will look like if you don't paint it. Now, when you get up to this scale, hmm, not painting even as a 10 year old is a bit, yeah, uh, I'm, I, I bet that most of them weren't painted, or maybe it was 50 50, but. They've at least put it in re reasonably sensible colours in this sort of silvery grey post-war looking type of spit. And then a bit of detail about the uh, the cockpit. Um, and it says, it says it, just go back to the colours, it says the finished model in three selected muted colours. No painting is necessary for younger modellers. So the choice is yours. Isn't it? Anyway, let's get into it. See what we've got inside this box. Now I pay for this a fair bit really. I mean when they came out they were about... £3.84 I think in the mid 70s. I paid close to £40 for this, which is astronomical. But anyway, let's move that out there and put it somewhere safe and see what we have inside. Now, you'll see little bags that I've added, that's the silica gel bags just to keep any moisture out. But let's have a nosy at what we've got. So it's green range, so it should be a green instruction leaflet, and it certainly is, as you can see. Got our clear parts which I've bagged up separately for safety. And take these gel packs out because they're a little bit in the way. So let's see what we got. Clear parts, we've got instructions, decals, Ooh, lots of decals, big decal sheet. Uh, more instructions. Oh, sorry, that's the instructions, the other one was the colour colour there. So let's look at them first. Starting with, I think, the decals actually. So we've got a nice tissue which is um, looking a bit papyrus like but the actual decals don't look too bad. Not bad at all. So what are we talking about here? We're um, 45 years old this kit is. And we've got the Egyptian here. We've got the, uh, I think it's the uh, City of Edinburgh squadron down here and then we've got the uh, 80 squadron over here. Now they don't look bad, I've got to say. They don't look bad, especially considering their age. It's some of the nicest decals I think we've seen of the older ones. Um, I'll bet you those will work perfectly first time, no problem at all. So put them aside. Then this green colour call out colour plan. Uh, quite nicely printed, I've got to say. Uh, oh, okay, it's very green, isn't it? You realise when you turn it over. So, what we got here? So, if, this is the City of Edinburgh. Sorry, the Royal Egyptian Air Force scheme. It doesn't actually say a lot in terms of colours. I think it's really just showing the... It does tell you the colours. You have to refer to the chart, which we'll come to in a second. Then we've got the... shows the uh, stencil data. And this is obviously the uh, 80 Squadron at Kai Tak Airport, Hong Kong. Uh, which is good. It's nice and clear, you know. Pretty good. And then same again with the, uh, the 50 Squadron, uh, City of Edinburgh Squadron showing the markings and you've still got this sort of post-war with a uh, an additional um, I was going to say an additional uh, strip around the roundel but it actually hasn't does it some of them no I'm wrong there but it's almost like um, the underneath the, the side roundel and the top wing roundel it has the white element in it which it didn't have during World War II low vis so you can tell it's post-war and then we've got the paint guide. So, um, see this clearly? Oh, whoops. Yeah, so it shows you a little painting up your engine. It's interesting how it shows the part with the seam line down it when they're, when they're joined. <laughs> That's quite funny. Um, yeah, you wouldn't, they wouldn't do that today, would they? <laughs> uh, they'd expect you to, you know, rub it down with a sanding stick and make it all look as one. And you've got your exhaust, your cam covers, your exhausts, uh, supercharger, uh, the braces that hold the strut braces that hold the engine into the aircraft. And then you get your pilot, it looks a bit chunky, doesn't it? Uh, and various other parts. Now this one I think is, is unusual, it comes with a gun bay, which is really quite good. And I don't think the, the other kit I'm going to review has that, so, so that's nice, gun bay. And all your various bits and bobs, your wheels and your trim for your canopy and your instrument panel. I noticed they don't have any sort of, don't think we have a decal for the panel now. You're going to have to just, yeah, you might you'd have to mark it or use a bit of imaginative painting to 
to create your panel accurately with the gauges. And then it gives you the, the actual colour schemes in humble callouts, of course. So that's that. And then the actual instructions themselves. Now, it's a bit weird because it doesn't have like a cover page like you normally do, it just goes straight into it. So here we go. So zoom in a bit more. So it's the basically the end, main engine, uh, cylinders, uh, cylinder, cylinder head I should say, and the exhaust all, all pre-molded as one piece which is kind of weird. Uh, and you've got your uh, supercharger uh, system, you've got your main block on the front, uh, the cooling system at the front, fuel tank, fuel tank, okay. And then we've got some instrumentation at the side of the cockpit wall, which is going to go in. Oh, sorry, I jumped ahead a bit too much. So again, the layout is so unusual. Normally they go down and across. This one goes across and then down. So sorry, we'll go back to number three. <laughs> so then you build it up. I thought, I thought, where did that just come from? That kind of cockpit interior. You build up your cockpit interior with your instrumentation and your yoke stick. Then you've got your um, back of the bulkhead until it's the engine will bolt. Uh, oil tank pilot, which shows quite a few parts there, one to three four parts. Seat, seat braces, and uh, various controls. You've got your tail wheel. Then we come to this one that I jumped ahead to <laughs> bringing your two co uh, cockpit sides together and your wall fuel tank. There's a fuel tank there, it looks like there's one behind and one in front by the way that they've uh, designed it out. Uh, so you don't want to have any fires, okay? <laughs> and then we've got the uh, the tail planes and horizontal and vertical stabilizers going on and then you're building in your canopy, which has got frame, which is good. So that's nice. So you should be able to avoid um, any, uh, any marks. If you glue it with some PVA glue, you'll be fine with that. And then we've got these gun bays I mentioned, you can see here where you've got your, um, and I don't think they're 303s in this, I think they're cannon aren't they, there's actually cannon bays, yes, and it says armament, 420mm, yeah, Hispano cannon, but on the other side we get into the wing build, and we've got spars going across, this is good, spars, and this is quite a good layout actually, quite a good concept, so that's a strengthening element to the model as well, as well as it being a bit more realistic. And then you've got your gun bay going underneath, in, popped in between the two halves of the wing. And then we come to one of the, the characteristics that I always remember about this kit, because I've had this before when I was young. The five-bladed propeller, which is very, very, uh, it's quite unique, uh, certainly uh, to the models that I'd built anyway. Uh, it gives it a lot of character. And then you've got your cannons coming together here, building up your undercarriage and your wheels and your tyres, and your radiators here. And then you're going to bring it all together, so your main fuselage now built up goes onto the wings and the fillets go in uh, like the real ones do actually afterwards which is good. And then you bring in your engine, your sports struts go in, your engine goes in, top cowling, side panels and you bring in your five bladed props, so you've got your Griffin engine, your five bladed prop making it out of late model spit. Finally you just add your cannons and your intakes. Uh, your gear, radiators, and the gear doors. And that's the model built. So it looks it looks fairly straightforward. I quite like that. Um, I do like the, uh, the gun bay element of it. That was uh, something I wasn't expecting. I don't think the other kits have that. So let's have a look at the plastic. See what we are starting with. Starting with our clear parts and. So it's like a bubble Mustang style canopy and then uh, you've got, oh that looks like instrumentation on the side is clear oh, that's interesting, okay, if you can see this come in a bit closer for you, how's that? that's quite nice, it's quite a nice uh, sprue this uh, not too fine marks, that's just uh, age rattling around in the box you know hence the reason I put it in a separate bag to try and uh, give it a bit of a break but it's a nice yeah, a little bit of distortion, you know, but it's a nice looking canopy that, for something that's 45 years of age, that's not bad at all. I wish I looked that unused when I was 45, yeah? <laughs> right, let's put that away. The, uh, sorry, the front windscreen, I didn't, I didn't really talk about that. Let's just put it back out a second. The front windscreen looks super, doesn't it? 
It's amazing how little that changed over the over the design of the spit. They didn't really change what, what was... I guess they thought it was okay, they didn't need to change that. The evolutions didn't touch it really. So that's that. Now then, in the box, just zoom me out for a second, because in the box, what we've actually got here is quite nice. It comes with this uh, cardboard separator to stop the sprues from rattling around, you know, like we, know, we all know that um, certain manufacturers uh, put everything in one bag, which I hate, because everything scratches together. Others just have them rattling around maybe in a bag or separate bags, but then just loose and flying around anyway, which makes things get broken off it. So that's a good idea. It's basically a step separator to stop stops lateral movement in the box. So let's have a look what we've got inside. Now, first of all, the black sprue. On which we have, there we go. Oh, we've got the Griffin engine with its exhaust already pre-moulded in and probably a good thing, it means you can't have problems with positioning all those exhausts, especially the younger models. I think that's why they did it, rather than some manufacturing you know, advantage. Then you've got these um, framework of the gun bays, which is nice. Then you've got, and you'll be noticing, just a lack of flash. A typical matchbox, There's no flash on any of this. Pure, clean parts. A few ejector pins, of course, here and there, um, but not really... Not really when you notice it, to be honest, but mainly on the back. So, here we've got the back of the, uh, as I mentioned, the braces that hold the engine in, and the back of the supercharger. Here we've got the pilot's hands. And then we've got Mr. Pilot himself. And he's quite a nice pilot. I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Um, I have to be honest and say that looks nicer than Tamiya's 30 second scale Spitfire pilot that was sitting there and I thought that was really bad. And the Spitfire kit was beautiful, the 30 second Mark 9. That is far nice, it's really detailed. And if you're picking this up on the camera, it's really, really nice. Uh, how well he goes together, that's another matter. <laughs> uh, and here's his seat, complete with some, uh, some shaping and uh, consoles to it, very nice. Um, and then you've got various parts, you've got the door here, sorry, here, the door, which you can have open if you wish. Those parts that go in the side of the cockpit, and then this is the bracing bars for the engine with the cutout for your exhaust to pop through. Looks a really nice sprue to be honest, I'm very impressed. Next one, grey sprue. This has got the fuselage and associated bits on it. Bring you in a bit, out I should say. There we go. Now that's a nice sprue as well. Um, I don't mind the grey plastic to be honest. It's uh, it's got a very graceful sort of uh, rounded, almost feminine look to this Spitfire because of the the more aerodynamic take and the development of the body panels later in the war. Uh, obviously, they changed slightly the tail shape as well. You've got the bulges, very feminine looking kind of bulges on the cowling here for the engine, just on top of the Griffin engine. That's nice, and you've got this big, big bulbous spinner, which is, uh, is yeah, that is really long, isn't it? It's, its length is huge. <laughs> and then you've got the back plate here for the uh, the five-bladed prop for the spinner, and you've got engraved panel lines, and it's it's all very soft, you know, uh, typical matchbox, but it's but it's nice, you know, it is. Uh, you've got some rivet detail here on your side panels going over your Griffin engine. You can feel the rivets quite quite sharp actually. Yeah, some nice detail there. It's fine. It's nice. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about this, about the tail. I'm just looking at it here with my thumb on it because earlier in the war there were, I think there were a canvas and aluminium mixed tail. I think this is all aluminium. I think that's why it hasn't got any sort of texture into it. So I guess that's just a later development of the aircraft. Then we come on to the light coloured sprue, which is a sort of sable coloured plastic really. Or is it, is it sable or is it puce? I'm not sure what you call that. Anyway, this is the underside. Now this is, goes back to what I said earlier about don't expect too much detail. Don't expect moving ailerons or flaps, which you would get in a modern kit. You know, you'd expect that at a 30 second scale. But this is 76 and actually they put more premium on how well it 
built up and the fact that you didn't need to clean this up, there's no flash, you're not going to need to clean anything up on this apart from the cut off points where you take it off the sprue. So you've got your Griffin engine main block here, got your control stick, cooling system uh, that goes around the engine at the front, you've got your control, well it's just half actually, top half of the, top half or bottom half, I'm not sure, uh, see you later, half of the um, horizontal stabilisers, and that's it really, you know, and engraving again, it's very soft, you know, like you expect with Matchbox, it's very much of the day. But it's nice, you know, and it's nice to have a kit that, you know, it's a nine-year-old, ten-year-old can throw together in a couple of days. That's what it's all about. It's not supposed to be Tamiya. You know, it wasn't Tamiya prices, let's face it. We've got to be, you know, it's got, it's got to be relevant when we say we're reviewing it. Kind of bear in mind what it was, what it cost, what the expectations were. Now here we've got one more black sprue. This is a nice one. This has got all your propeller blades on it. There they are, one, two, three, four, five. They're all in one piece, so those are nice. Um, don't worry about the, the check the plas plastic appearance there, it's not actually a fault, it's just uh, it's just the way the plastic is formed, it's completely smooth. So that's not going to give you any trouble at all. You've got your fuel tank, oil tanks here, gear legs here. There's the big brace I mentioned for the for the wing, the spar. And there's the other one, the second one underneath. And here we've got the radiators covers, and then you've got your radiator grills themselves. Those are a bit poor, if I'm honest, because they're very, they're so finely modelled you can barely see anything. Uh, nowadays, that would probably have photo etch on it with a modern manufacturer, but well, hey, there you go. Oil fuel tank, oil tank here, and then you've got various other parts like your cannons here, uh, front ca front of the cannons here. One, two, three, four. Uh, they're made up in several pieces, and then you've got the cannons themselves, actually, which are featured here. The, the, the gun, uh, the bullet drum attached to it, which is nice. Here you've got your wheels and tyres. Those are nicely done. They've even got tread on them, that's quite good. And here you've got your ammunition belts. Look at that. That's superb. It's definitely a step forward. So that's really good. Another nice sprue, there's no flash, no problem. And then lastly but not least, we have got this second sort of pewter colour, which is the top wing. And here you've got the cutouts for the gun base and the blisters, blister covers to accommodate those uh, drums we just saw. Uh, and there's the fillets, the aerodynamic fillets that fill in the gap in the wing, just like the real thing. You've even got the pilot's parachute here, if you can see this. Well that's nice isn't it, you've got a contour of the parachute, that's well done. And then you've got the uh, the top, or I think it's the bottom actually, of the... I can't tell which is top and bottom, one's smooth, I think the top's smooth isn't it? And the bottom has the trim piece on it, I'll check that in a second. And this is the way around, that's the top, the other one's the bottom. Um, and then there's one or two bits of uh, piping that goes into the engine and there's one of the controls, uh, is it throttle, throttle control or ge gear control I think, lever. That's kind of it really. So again it's a bit soft, you know, we, we know that that's the case, but it's all there. The panel lines that you need are there. You know, it'll still take a wash, I'm going to make this in a sort of modern style, give it a nice wash, that'll pick out the panel lines a bit better. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's a very nice kit to be quite honest, and um, that's kind of it really. It's typical, it's typical matchbox of the day, isn't it? It's uh, it's a very easy to build, simple concept. It's not going to challenge anybody, even a youngster, too much, as long as they can safely, you know, snip them off with something um, and glue it. It's going to build up into a, into a spit, and it's going to look quite nice. So to be honest. Um, I've forgotten what it was like because it's a long, long time since I've actually. Uh, I'm not sure if I really went through this before. I've never reviewed it before. It's a nice kit, that you know, given its limitations, as I said about the year it was manufactured and the softness and the, uh, you know, it's made to a price, etc. But frankly, I like that. I think it's a nice kit for for the money. What it cost at the time, about three or four pounds. Uh, you know, it's it's everything you'd expect and more, and um, probably keep you going for a good. Good long weekend, say a bank holiday weekend. You know. So.
So I'd say, I don't know, relative to, its, to what it is, I'd say about nine out of 10 for that. I think it's uh, nothing nasty. There's no raised panel lines. There's nothing at all to criticize. Just soft, you know, soft and simple. Uh, and that's the way they did it. So thumbs up from me, nine out of 10. Hope you'll give me a thumbs up when you see the review. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll just get you the uh, cover back so you can see it. There we go. So that's the Spitfire Mark 22 Strap 24 from Matchbox. It's PK501. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and ding the notification bell because if you do that, you'll get notification of upcoming videos as soon as they appear. And in the meantime, until the next one, Thanks very much, great that you could join me and uh, take care of yourselves and bye for now.